Special guest Tomas Bradford of Learning English with Tommy joins us to discuss tips for improving overall English skills as you prepare for the IELTS exam. He shares advice on getting the most out of your study of music, film, and books. Welcome everyone to the podcast. We have a special guest today. Tommy, would you like to introduce yourself to our listeners? Yes, um, I'm Tommy Bradford, 31 years old. I come originally from the UK, um, but I now live in southern Germany with my wife and three children. I am an English teacher. Yep, here yes. in Germany. And you have a company called Learn English with Tommy, correct? That's exactly the truth. Yeah. When exactly. did you start that? How did it come about that you created that company? Well, the thing is, I started off seven years ago when I came here to Germany as um, on the on my journey as being a teacher. I um, I had the qualifications when I when I came here, but it was almost impossible to find jobs. So I, you know, I I dipped into the German market by by looking at language schools and other and other ways of finding myself jobs. And then I found my I after after a while I realized it wasn't working for me. So then I moved into full time employment in a completely different sector, which I hated. What was it? I have to know. <laughs> it was the hotel sector. Yeah, Ooh, as, a, as a receptionist. Yeah, hospitality. So it was, That's rough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not the nicest of all. And then I decided, well, Enough is enough. Um, I'm going to open up my new, open up my company. And then I was like, yeah. From that moment onwards, it was like, I have no, there's no turning back. Yeah, you loved so it. I was, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Because teaching a language is the best job out there. We're so lucky to have it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we, we're, not, we're not taking from people. We are giving to people. We are giving people our expertise and this is what I this is what I prefer, this is what I love you know I, I love giving back after so many years of going to school university it's time that I started giving back <laughs> right it's our turn <laughs> and your company specializes in learning a language through music books and like movies correct exactly so listeners you're in for a treat tommy is going to give you some of his insider tips on how to use these mediums to improve your english language learning because all of our, our listeners are preparing for the ielts exam but they have to improve their overall english we're talking to you guys all the time about how important it is to find something you love to read find something you love to listen to but sometimes it's a little tricky to figure out what exactly to do with it maybe or how to do it. So I'm excited for your tips about this. So let's dive right in, shall we? Yeah, let's dive right in. So um, I'd like to take music um, to start with because I'm a, I'm a music lover. If you could see behind me, which you can't, but you know, that's not a problem. Well, we are going to put it on I'm... YouTube. So they'll, Wait, they'll, they can see some <laughs> things behind Somewhere you. Down, the, <laughs> down, here, down here behind me, there are these two, there are these two boxes, black and black and the paper box they're full of uh records from my father yeah so my dad gave me all his my dad gave me all his records um i used to have a record player but i sold it so i don't have a record player anymore i still have um, one you can send me all your records and i'll make good use of them <laughs> well how about you send me your record player and then That's i can brushed. play my record <laughs> <laughs> i should i actually have one oh i thought it was in here um i have a, like a portable one in a little suitcase Oh, and nice. then I have another big old one from like the 1950s. I actually also have a ton of records. So we're like-minded here. I love it. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. So, you know, I've, I've always liked music. Um, so I've always been interested in, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the melodies, harmonies, different, the, the structure of music. But, you know, as you're an English, as you become an English teacher, you have to look at the other side of music. The other side of music is how we can use it to learn English. And just today, I posted up a, a, um, a new blog post about the legendary Marvin Gaye. Uh, anyone who knows their stuff about music knows Marvin Gaye, Motown, yes. <laughs> 60s, 70s, the Prince of Motown, the Prince of Soul. And... I looked at, in particular, I heard it through the grapevine. 
Now, if you know, you probably now as we probably say it, you probably got this tune running in your mind. You know, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. No, no, don't it sing to it, you. or we'll have to edit that out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Don't worry. So, um, in this blog post, I looked in particular at the song. What is it that makes this song so so amazing for English learners? And you know, just the just the song title. I heard it through the grapevine. Is as we know. A, an idiom, you know. So you know, you're thinking already. This is a good. This is already a great start to the blog post. And then I looked and basically examine the grammatical structure of a of a song or of a or of a band. What is it that makes them so unique, and what makes them help you? My, my first tip is to read my blog post i'm not going to give it away for you because that is not that you know that would not that would not be fair there is a blog post i wrote a while back the six simple steps of listening to music and to improve your listening skills okay. and basically i go through six very simple steps which can be used with any band any singer any song um, in the blog post i particularly looked at abba the swedish the swedish band and you, you, you know, listeners are probably thinking, why ABBA? You know, they're not even British, they're not American, they're not from Australia, they're not from New Zealand, wherever. But in Sweden and in the Scandinavian North, they speak pretty much perfect English. So much so that it, we, we as native speakers feel ashamed that they speak such good English, you know? And with the help of ABBA, you can use these six simple steps which start with looking at the song title and ending you hopefully being able to understand a lot more of the song that you did before. And there you, there you create the, the, the notion of the six simple steps to learn okay. to improve your listening skills. We'll have to include a link to that blog post so that our listeners can get listeners can get all of those six steps because I know with every song that you listen to and really dive into the lyrics, you can learn so much like you were saying grammatical structure, idioms, slang, like there's so much that you can get from every song. Yeah, exactly. Um, it doesn't matter what song you look at there is always something hidden inside of it. And interestingly, as English teachers or as English trainers, we, when we listen to a song, it's no longer, we're, we're no longer enjoying the song. I've noticed more that I've been actively trying to listen. What can I, what, <coughs> Sorry. bless you. <laughs> uh, what, what, I should have brought water like you did. <laughs> yeah, what is it that, what is, uh, what, what particular grammat grammatical structure or what particular thing can I, can I fish out of this song and then use it for a blog post? Because I'm always on the, uh, I'm always on the lookout for new songs or new, new material to use as blog posts. You know, it's not these ideas that my blog posts are not just like, oh, today I would like to do the Supremes. So I, you know, it's not, it's not thought of, you know, it's not just like a, it's not like not a like random like, happenstance. Exactly. That you it's not a rapid, a exactly. I, mm -hmm. I look at what I, I think of something which is particular, which would help my, which would help my niche, help my, my uh, learners. And then I take it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Interesting. All right. So it's it's interesting how you could choose any song really right you could pick yep. a song at random to study and listen to and read the lyrics and i mean it's difficult to understand language that is sung much more difficult than especially like rap i try to understand french rap forget it it's and i'm fluent in french but it's very difficult for me to understand it it's fast so much mm -hmm. slang so difficult and then i read the lyrics and try to pick it apart and there's so much to learn but that's a really good point that you can also choose a specific either a topic or a grammar structure or a specific idiom and find several songs about that that you could study exactly you can you know you just have to google english idioms music and it comes out with comes out with hundreds hundreds of thousands of pages that you can you know you can find some material on and if you're looking for that particular idiom um you know hear it through the grapevine then you know the first first thing that comes to mind marvin gay 
beautiful song. That's right. One of my, you know, it's a, it's an abs- it's an absolute classic. Um, and people think, you know, I've heard people say to me, oh, come on, you, you're kidding me. The, uh, in every blog post that you write, it's always the same old, same old, oh, in this, you can hear, you, you find the present, you, you find the simple present, you find the past simple, you find the present perfect, whatever. And I was like, no, yes, I do write this. But the idea is that one song has can have so many grammatical structures in it. And it doesn't have to be so monotonously boring but i find it i go into i like to cut a song open and see what is there really inside of it you know you're like a surgeon dissecting it for all of the interesting bits inside yeah Yeah, all right so give us another tip what can students who are trying to improve their overall listening skills how can they do that through either music or movies or books well okay let's take let's take music uh, we've taken music. Let's take. Oh, we're gonna have to edit that. <laughs> um, let's take films now. Films and series. You know, you're you you're watching the latest um, series on Netflix, and you're thinking, "Oh, I don't really, I don't understand much of that." You know, and so, you know, there are some series which are very, which are very hard even as natives to understand. Take the Gilmore Girls. I wrote this. I wrote a book, a blog post about them last week and you know in the Gilmore Girls you find this you find this notion that the Gilmore Girls and all the characters they speak very quickly you know that they're incredibly quick so you're thinking okay well you know subtitles subtitles are definitely not going to help here you know and I can't understand every word that they say so then what you need to do is that you shouldn't under, you shouldn't try to understand every word, but you should try to understand the general themes of the to, of the episode. So if you're watching an episode of a series that you like, try to understand the general themes, not every word. You know, write down words that you don't understand. Find it, look for them in an English English dictionary, or if you know, worst case scenario, look in an English. You know, you look in an English dictionary with your native tongue. You know, so there we got. That is basically another way of learning to improve your listening skills. Um, and after, let's say, three, four, maybe five episodes of a series, you might think, "Wow, well, look at me! I'm now a professional. I can now understand what they're speaking about." I understand about. it, and I love this show. <laughs> No, that's such a great point. It's such a great tip, especially if they are speaking very quickly, that you don't want to be stopping and making sure you understand every word or you will hate it. And you want Mm -hmm. to love the experience so that it'll pull you in and you become engaged and then it's enjoyable and you're learning a lot. And when they are speaking very rapidly, one of the only ways to do that is let yourself be immersed and just try to understand the overall theme, the overall topics, get to know the characters and don't Mm -hmm. worry about understanding every word. That's really good advice. You know, and there's also the problem with accents and dialects. You know, you just have to look at any series any British series and you'll find lots of accents in there. You'll find any American series and you'll have different accents, whether you come from Texas or you come from the, you come from New York, you know, you, you guys in America have your own accents as well, you know, and you have your own dialects, I guess. Um, so, you know, depending on what series you watch, you know, there will always be somewhere where you, you're not sure, you know? Um, so what I would say is not to be put off by this, because lots of my, you know, lots of people, they will listen to, they will watch something and they will not understand the accents, dialects, whatever it might be. And they're put off and they say, I don't want to watch this anymore. It's not fun anymore. Don't be put off by it. Continue. Because it takes a while for us all to get to that golden stage of we understand everything. You know right. what I mean? You just have to take your example of French rap music. I'm not there yet. <laughs> no, exactly. There yet. You're working away to what you're working away towards that golden goal. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Do you have a third tip for us? Yeah, books. Okay, books. let's hear it. No, you know, I've read, I've read a lot of blog articles on the internet, especially, you know, I'm not going to name names on here because that would not be fair. 
just in case they're watching and they're listening. But there are lots of these blog articles that say the best way to learn to read a book is to take something which is, a, you know, which is a step lower than this, than the level that you might be. So you might be high intermediate. So you take an intermediate book, or you take a low intermediate book if you are an intermediate book. If you're an intermediate, you know. Um, and the theory but, is that then you'll understand every word and you'll be competent. Read the whole that's book. Too easy. That's too easy. That's too easy. Set yourself the challenge of reading something which is a step higher than where you really are. Yeah. So if you are uh, if you are really a lower intermediate, take yourself, get yourself a book and find, and read an intermediate book. Yeah. Or if you're if you're almost at the advanced stage of learn of learning, then take something which is which would be classed as a very high level proficiency level book. And um, and I I'm going to go back to something that I wrote a couple of weeks back: comic books. Uh, yes. Comic books are something. Comic books are something which people think oh, they're for kids, right? No, come on. You know, they're, they're You know, I'm not going to deny this, but I used to read comic books when I was a kid. I don't read. You them should anymore. not be ashamed of that. Comic books no, are amazing. No, I still read books comic books. <laughs> exactly. They they make they they help you also with learning a language. Yeah. So I also I wrote a blog post a couple of weeks back: the six comic books to improve your English. That's also up there. That's also a link that you can include here, somewhere wherever you might be putting this on YouTube or on your blog or whatever. So include that. You know, I'm happy for you to to include all links that I'm talking about. You can you can go through this. Awesome. And comic book co comic books are also amazing because they use limited language. They use very small text, very limited amount. And they are very easy to they are very easy to get through, and the page turners and they're exciting, you know. And it, it just it just you, you know you just have to take uh, peanuts for example, a traditional American comic book, and you're thinking, wow, this is really this is really exciting. And then you move from the peanuts comic book, you can move into for example the peanuts film or films, you know. So there's always that step up, you know, from books to films. Which is also which is a which is, I find amazing, and I would definitely recommend comic books as something that you should read, even yes. if you are an adult like us. You know? Oh, for sure, it, we've recommended here be them before. Um, my co-host Jessica loves comic books and is always recommending them. And it's exactly like you said; it's still pushing you to read something that is a little difficult for you because the grammar is still difficult. It's still the language level might be higher, but you it's not a ton of text so you're moving through it quickly it's very engaging and interesting so it's all this comic books are a great thing to read well tommy yeah, thank you so much for coming and sharing these tips i'm definitely going to share the links to some of these articles and let us know what is your website where can they find your blog posts with more information well if you go to www.learningenglishwithtommy.com and then on then you'll find blog and you'll come straight to the site which shows you the latest blog uh, articles. On the right hand side, you also see the five or six latest blog posts that I've written. Okay, perfect. All right, so definitely check that out, you guys. Learn English with Tommy. And yeah, thanks again for joining us today. It was fun to have you here. Thank you. Right, have a great day. You too. Goodbye. Bye. Now.